Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 15. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 Chapter 2 Start or the Finished File, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we have a data set. And we're actually going to use this data set for the next couple videos to create frequency distributions and the appropriate charts. Now, in this video, we want to look at a categorical variable website and count how many transactions for each one of the websites. Now this data set is for the company Boomerang Incorporated. And this company sells boomerangs online through four different websites. Now this is categorical data. So we'll simply count using either the count ifs function or a pivot table, and then we'll make a column chart. Now let's go ahead and click here and Control down arrow. So this is like 26,000 records here, Control up arrow. Now I want to click in a single cell. We'll do pivot tables first, put it on a new sheet, and then we'll see how to do the count ifs functions on that sheet. Now the keyboard is Alt and V, as we've seen in the earlier videos. But notice the default is new worksheet. Not only that, but anytime you have a dialog box, if a button is highlighted, that means the Enter key will enact it. So it's really Alt, N, V, and Enter. It puts it on a new sheet. I'm immediately going to double click this and call this CAT for categorical, FD for frequency and distribution, and column chart, and Enter. Now here's our field list. Now I'm going to actually drag this. I'm going to point to the top and click, and it's kind of hard to drag, and drag it over here, resize this. So ready, we're going to drag website to rows, and then website down to values, and look at that. Now I don't like row labels, so design, report layout, tabular. Click right here, and we'll type frequency and Enter. Now we want to drag websites a second time, because what we'd also like to do is do percent frequency. Here we can clearly see that Amazon is where we sell most of our boomerangs, then our own base website, coloradoboomerangs.com, and then some at eBay and some at gelboomerangs.com. So there's our frequency, our count. The total, of course, tells us how many transactions we have in that data set. Hopefully, we don't have any empty cells. Actually, when we control down arrow, we would have bumped in one of those empty cells if there was an empty cell. But now we want to do percent frequency, which is just a fancy way of saying take each one of these as the numerator and then divide it on top of the denominator total. That'll give us the percentage of the column total. So guess what? Right click and oh, the ever so powerful show values as, and we want percent of column total. And just like that, we have frequency and percent frequency and enter. Now I want to do the same calculation with formulas. And in general, you know, the pivot table is much faster and easier. The only time we want to switch over to formulas is if the data is going to change and we want it to instantly update without having to use right click refresh. Now right click refresh doesn't seem like much, and it's not. But sometimes we need everything to update automatically, so that's where formulas come in. Now, one thing about formulas is that you do not have a feature that will automatically create a unique list. Well, if you don't already have the pivot table, here's a great trick. You can go up to Data and Advanced Filter. Now, Advanced Filter, we're going to copy to another location. But notice, with all of our data analysis features, we didn't have a single cell selected inside our data set. But no problem, the Collapse button will let us go to a different sheet. I'm going to click on Sales Data. Click in the actual field name, and then do Control-Shift-Down arrow. And what we want is this awesome little checkbox. Unique records, notice it jumps us back to the sheet. I also need to tell it where I want that to go. And when I click OK, boop, there it is, a unique list using advanced filter. Now I'm going to type frequency, tab, and percent frequency, tab. Highlight the two columns, click and drag. 
right click, and I'm going to grab that Format Painter to copy just the formatting, and then select those two cells, and boop, highlight these two cells, add some formatting for formulas. And now we want to click in the cell, and we're going to use count ifs, equals count ifs. And guess what? The criteria range is on a different sheet, but no problem. We're going to do a sheet reference. Well, if the range is on a different sheet, how do we get there? We simply click on the sheet. Oh, look at this. I'm way down at the bottom. I'm going to use the keyboard Control Home just to jump to the top, A1. And then I can get in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, and F4 to lock it. Now, you could see the formula. Here's the screen tip right here, formula evolving up in the formula bar. Now, there's a crazy thing that happens when I comma and go back to our sheet. It puts in the actual sheet name, even though I'm on the sheet. And watch this. Even if you were to delete this, once you go over to a new sheet, you're permanently in sheet reference mode. So we don't really need that. So I'm simply going to highlight and delete. And so now there's our formula, close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now we're in a slightly different order than over here. The pivot table unique list alphabetized it. The advanced filter unique records only gives us the first ones that runs into, but no problem. If I want it the same, right click. Notice this is the field names at the top, records and rows, so I can use the sort feature. Notice I'm using right click and I'm going to sort A to Z. And so there we have it. Now we can simply come below, Alt equals to add it up, and Enter. Total, Control Enter, Shift, Arrow, Arrow. And I'm going to use Control B. And then add some formatting for our formulas. And now we can calculate our percent frequency. Equals relative cell reference, one to my left. I use the left arrow, divided by left arrow, Control down arrow, F4. Control Enter and click and drag it down. Now I can click below and Alt equals Control Enter. Now I can highlight and add a percentage number formatting with two decimals showing. Now we have our frequency percent frequency with either a pivot table or formulas. Now let's talk about making a chart. This is categorical data, so we have Insert. And in the Charts group, for categorical data, we have three choices, pie, column, or bar. Now, in recent years, the trend in data analytics is to use column charts over pie charts. Not only that, but research shows that humans can understand differences between column heights better than they can pie pieces. So I'm going to click on the column and use 2D. Oh, wait a second. Look at that. It's thinking I want the whole table. I'm going to have to highlight. I only want the labels at the top and the actual categorical data and count. Now I can go up to column and use 2D, not 3D. 3D tends to be chart junk. Now one thing about long labels when you have a column chart is they don't fit so well. So that's where the bar chart comes in. I'm going to go to Change chart type, and then over here click on Bar, and click OK. Much better. Now we can click on the columns, Control-1, and in 2013 and later we have this task pane. You can adjust the gap width, but you do not want to do that. Zero gap width is reserved for continuous quantitative data, but you can change the gap width a little if you'd like. I'm going to go up to the Paint bucket and Fill. You can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to vary colors by point. Now I can close the Task pane. And I actually can come over here. And in the green plus, I love this, Data Labels. It used to be so much harder in earlier versions to add data labels. That's looking good there. But now we have Chart Junk. I want to click down on the horizontal axis and hit Delete. Now I'd like to come up and click on the chart title and just type my chart title. Boomerang Inc. 2015 Sales Frequency by Website. Notice when I type, the chart label didn't update. But as soon as I hit Enter, 
Boom, there we go. Now, here's a crazy thing. I want to change the font. And if I Control-1, it's going to open this over here. But there's no font, and there's no font over here. You actually have to right click and point to Font, or use the keyboard Control-Shift-F to get to Font, or actually just go up to Home, and then Font Size. I'm going to bring it down to 12. Now, one last thing. We want to go over to the tab called Discrete Quantitative Data. And here we have a frequency distribution. This is a discrete random variable. There's gaps between these numbers. This is counting. Zero people came in in a one minute period to our fast food restaurant at a busy lunchtime. One person, two people, three people, four people. You could see the biggest frequency from our sample data 266 times. Four people came in during a one minute period. Well, how do we visually articulate this data? Well, this discrete random variable goes along the horizontal axis. And then, of course, the heights of the column represent the frequency. But notice there's gap widths here to visually indicate that no numbers can fit between three and four. There is a gap. Back here on our cat FD, the length of these bars articulates the frequency or the count, and then the labels are off to the side. All right, so in this video, we talked about building frequency distributions and percent frequency distributions for categorical data with formulas and with pivot tables, and then we saw an appropriate chart. Now in next video, we'll talk about frequency distributions and the appropriate charts for continuous quantitative data. All right, we'll see you next video.